Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this part of the series we are going to continue adding more enemies to the game. So we are going to add this saw. As you can see it's moving back and forth. We'll create a C sharp script that handles that. Also we are going to add this chain. We will just animate it using the animator window. So before we get started make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon. And let's jump right into it. So let's start off with the easiest obstacle, which is the chain. We will just add it to the scene. Then we are going to animate it by changing the Z rotation. And to do that, let's go under this folder. So we have this maze preview image. Let's drag it under the hierarchy. So you can't see it. To fix that, change the order in layer. Let's increase the order in layer to 4. So let's move it a little bit to the right so that we can see it much better. We are going to create a simple animation in which we are going to change the Z rotation. So when I rotate this thing, as you can see, it's rotating. But we have one problem. It's rotating around the middle of the sprite. So we need to change the pivot point to this one. And to do that, we can create an empty game object using right click, create empty. And let's call it a chain. Then let's go to the scene. So I'm going to reset the position of the empty game object and the chain as well then let's move this empty game object to this point so I'm gonna select the move tool as you can see it's in the middle let's move it a little bit to this point and to use this empty game object as the pivot point of the sprite you could simply make it a child under this chain now if we rotate this object as you can see it's rotating around the chain we can animate this empty game object. So let's move it a bit over here as well. Then let's open up the animation window using window, animation, then animation. And let's create one animation. I'm going to put it under the enemies folder. And let's call it a chain. Then we need to hit this record button. And we will create the keyframes. Basically we will change the Z rotation. So make sure to change this a bit to save the first keyframe. Then let's give it back to zero. Then let's go to the frame 20. And let's change the rotation to 30. Then let's go to the frame 40. And give it back to zero. Then we need to rotate it to the other side. So at the frame 60, I'm going to change the Z rotation to minus 30. And finally we need to give it back to zero. So at the frame 80. I'm gonna give it back to zero. Now if we hit play, we have this animation. We could also adjust the speed from the animator window. So let's close this. Then let's open up the animator controller. So it's under here. Just double click on it. And let's change the speed from here. Select the chain animation. And under the inspector, we can change the speed to 0.5. And let's hit play. And there you go, we've added our first obstacle. We just need to add some kind of collider. So I'm gonna add the collider to this sphere or this circle. Select the maze preview and let's add a circle collider 2D. But it's a little bit big, so we need to change it over here. We can change the radius to 0.3. Then let's move it by changing the Y offset. Now it's in the middle. And let's increase the radius to 0.8 and I think that's better. Later on we are going to check if the player hits this circle collider. In such case we can display a game over screen. Now let's work on the saw obstacle. But first of all let's move this chain. So select the chain object and move it to the side. Also I want to change the size. I think it's a little bit big. So let's change it to 0.8. Before we start implementing the logic of the saw obstacle, let's make a simple explanation. Basically, we'll have this platform. Then we are going to add the saw. Then we are going to move it left and right using transform.translate. But we need to check if we have reached the edge of the platform. We need to change the direction. And to do that, we have a predefined function. And it's called physics2d.raycast. 
In fact, we are going to create two empty game objects, one on this side and another one on this side of the uh, saw. And we can use the physics.raycast to check if there is something underneath of the objects. So this function will create an invisible line underneath of the empty game object. And if it's touching something like the platform, we can continue moving. And if it's not, so when we reach the edge of the uh, platform, in such case, we can change the direction. The same thing, we can check if we have reached the right edge of the platform, then we can reverse the direction. So to do that, let's go back into Unity and let's add the saw. So under the enemies folder, we have this saw sprite. Let's move it under the hierarchy and let's put it on top of this platform and make sure to change the order in layer to a bigger number like three so that we can see it. And as I said, we need to add two empty game objects, one on the right side and another one on the left side to check if we have reached the end of the platform. And to do that, let's right click, create empty, and let's call it right check. I'm gonna move it to the right side. And let's duplicate it. And let's move it to the left side by changing the exposition to minus 0.75. And let's change the name as well to left check. Now we need to create a C-sharp script and attach it to the saw. So under the scripts folder, let's right click, create C-sharp script. I'm gonna call it saw. And let's attach it to the saw object. Then I'm gonna open it up in Visual Studio. So first of all, we need to add few variables like the speed of the saw using public float and let's call it speed and let's give it the default value too. Also we need a direction variable using int. I'm gonna call it dir equals one by default. We're going to use this variable to move the saw left or right depending on the value of the direction. And finally we need to add a reference to the right and the left check objects using public transform. We just need the transform of the objects. I'm gonna call the first one right check and let's call the second one left check. We are going to reference these from the inspector. Then under the update method, or let's change it to the fixed update. It will smooth the movement of the saw. And in order to move it, we are going to use transform dot translate. We just need to give it the direction which is going to be vector2.right. We need to move the saw horizontally using vector2.right. Then we multiply that by the speed. And let's multiply it by the direction. And finally, we need to multiply it by the time.fixed delta time to make it frame rate independent. But also, we need to check if we have reached the end of the platforms. We need to change the direction by multiplying it by minus 1. And to do that, we are going to use if physics2d dot raycast so this predefined function takes the position of the object so we are going to use the right check object dot position and the second parameter is a direction so we need to look downward to check if we have reached the end of the platform that's why i'm going to use vector2 dot down and optionally we can add a distance parameter like two units so this is going to create a two units line underneath of the right check object. And if it's touching an object like the platform, it's going to return true. So we only need to change the direction when this returns false. So we can check if it's false. That means that we have reached the end of the platform. In such case, we can change the direction. And in this case, we need to change it to minus one so that we can move to the left side. And let's add another if statement for the left check. So make sure to change the right check empty game object to the left one. This is going to check if we have reached the left side. In such case, we need to change the direction to one so that the saw moves along the right direction. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's get rid of the start method. We don't need it. And let's save the script. And don't forget to reference this. So select the saw and drag in the right check and the left check as well. And let's hit play. 
So the saw is moving uh, back and forth. You just need to create some kind of animation. So we are going to rotate this saw around the Z axis. But we have one problem. As you can see, the right check and the left check is rotating as well. And that's going to mess up the script. So to fix that, we need to make sure to uh, put these out of the saw. Then we can only animate this saw uh, sprite. And to do that, let's change the rotation to zero again. And let's move these out. Then let's create an empty game object using right click, create empty. I'm gonna call it saw as well. And make sure it has the same position of the saw. So I'm gonna copy the position and let's paste it. Then let's put the saw sprite under this empty game object. And let's move these as well. Now we can rotate the saw and it's not going to rotate these objects around the Z axis. So as you can see they are in place. Now let's create the animation using the animation window. Let's hit create and let's put it under the enemies folder. I'm gonna call it saw as well and let's hit save. So let's change the Z rotation as usual to save the first keyframe then let's give it back to zero. I'm gonna go to the frame 30 and let's rotate this around the Z axis like 180 then let's go to the frame 60 and I'm gonna change it to 360 degrees and as you can see it's rotating around the Z axis I would just change the speed and we use the animator window so we have the saw animation I'm gonna change the speed to 2 and let's hit play but we still have the same problem as you can see it's a little bit weird that's because we are rotating this saw and under the saw script we are using vector 2 dot down so it's taking the down vector of the saw so to fix that we can attach the script to this saw empty game object or you could change the vector 2 dot down to the right check down vector and that's going to fix the problem but I'm gonna go with the first solution so let's remove the script from the saw sprite then let's attach it to the parent using add component and let's search for the saw script of course you need to reference the right check and the left check and there you go we've created a very common enemy AI behavior it's like the Super Mario enemies it's moving back and forth so I think that's pretty much it guys for this video I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to put it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.